we've seen the slope intercept of a form of an equation of a line. It looked like this, y equals mx plus b. So this was what we called slope intercept form. And it was a good form to write the equation of a line, especially if we knew what the slope and the y-intercept was. But there's another way we can write the equation of a line, and it's called general form. And the general form of a line looks like this. Something x, so ax, a is some number, plus by plus c equals 0. So if we moved everything to one side of the equation and set the equation equal to 0, this would be the general form of a line. Now there's some uh, some criteria on these numbers, a, b, and c. The first number a has to be a number that's greater than or equal to 0. So this cannot be a negative, negative number. And then the b and the c, actually all of these, a, b, and c, need to be integers. Well, technically, I guess, since a is greater than or equal to 0, this would be a natural number. But my point is, is there can be no fractions here. So an example of something in general form like, might look like this. 3x minus 5y plus 6 equals 0. So we start with the x, then we write the y, then we have the constant term equals 0. There can't be any fractional coefficients, so 3 minus 5 and 6, no fractions there. And our first term, which is 3, the leading coefficient of x, must be positive. So these are the criteria for writing an equation in general form. x, y, constant equals 0, and the leading coefficient of x is got to be non-negative, and there can be no fractions in our equation. So we'll look at how we can take an equation in y equals mx plus b form, slope-intercept form, and convert it to general form. So I've got an equation here in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, y equals 3x minus 7, and I'm going to convert it to general form. So the first thing I need to do is I need to get everything all on one side. So I'm going to move everything over here to the left side. Because I want my equation to equal 0. So if I take the 3x and I move it to the other side, it's going to become a negative 3x. I'm going to minus 3x from both sides. So I'm going to move this over here, negative 3x. My y term comes next, so plus y. And then finally my constant term, it was a minus 7. So when I add 7 to both sides, I have a plus 7 on this side. So just simply moving all my terms to the left-hand side of the equation has given me negative 3x plus y plus 7. So I've written my x, my y, and then finally my number equals 0. There's no fractions in any of my expressions, so that's good. My one problem that I have here, though, is that my leading coefficient on x is negative. I don't want that. It's supposed to be positive. So I'm going to just take everything, both sides of this equation, and multiply it by minus 1. So that negative 1 times negative 3x becomes positive 3x. Negative 1 times y is minus y. And negative 1 times 7 is negative 7 equals, and of course, 0 times negative 1 is still 0. So there's y equals 3x minus 7 converted to general form. Let's consider another example here. y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 5. So y equals mx plus b, slope of negative 2 thirds, y-intercept of 5. Let's write this in general form. So I'm going to move my terms over to this side. Positive 2 thirds x. When we add that, then comes the y. And then bringing the 5 over to the other side is minus 5 equals 0. So I've set my equation equal to 0. So there's three things to make sure that we've got. x, y number equals 0. We're good there. We need to make sure that the first term is not negative. We're good there. But the problem is, is we've got fractions in this uh, expression. So 
I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. So both sides of the equation multiplied by 3 because 3 will cancel with the 3 down here. So this is like 3 times 2 which is 6. 3 is like, th is like 3 over 1. So 3 times 2, 6 over 3 x plus 3 times y is 3 y minus 3 times 5 which is 15 equals 0 times 3 is 0. And then of course 6 divided by 3 is 2. That's why we multiplied by that denominator so that we could cancel it out. And so now I have the equation in general form. I've made sure I've got x followed by y followed by constant equals 0. I've made sure my coefficient of x is positive and I've made sure I have no fractions uh, with any of my my numbers there. So that's converting um, y equals mx plus b or the slope intercept form into general form. So let's say we wanted to draw the graph of this function using the general form. Well, general form is is not really the best form uh, in order to to graph the equation of a line because the y equals mx plus b form this form here is is very useful for graphing the line because we have the slope and the y-intercept and we can very quickly draw its graph by plotting the y-intercept and then using the slope to get to another point. So for us to graph the general form what we might want to do is simply find the x-intercept and the y-intercept and this is done relatively simple. If you want to find the y-intercept, we simply need to just simply set x equal to 0. Let's show you a little graph here. So say this is the graph of a line. If we want to find the y-intercept, that would be this point right here. We don't know what the y-intercept is. That's b. We don't know what that number is. But one thing that we do know is that the coordinate of the x value will be 0. Everywhere on this on this y axis, wherever your graph is going to cross the y axis, the x value will always be 0. This is your x axis. We're not anywhere left or right. We're just straight up and down. So the x value will be 0. So if I want to find the y intercept of this line, I just simply need to set x equal to 0. So if I put 0 in for x, I get this equation now, 4 times 0 minus 3 times y minus 12 equals 0. 4 times 0 is 0, so that's negative 3y minus 12 equals 0. And then to, to isolate y, because I'm trying to find this y-intercept, I'm going to bring the 12 over to the other side, so add 12 to both sides. And then finally divide by negative 3. And I get a y-intercept of 4. So that means, let's actually draw this one. Um, let's just get rid of this and start it again. Let's get a nice looking graph on here too. So I have a y-intercept of 4. I can put a dot right there. I know my graph, the graph of this line right here, is going to have a y-intercept of 4. Now if I want to find the x-intercept, again, this time all I have to do is set y equal to 0. Because wherever my graph is going to cross the x-axis, that would be the x-intercept where it crosses the x-axis, the y value will be 0 because it's not any distance up or down. The y value is 0 on all these points. So if I set y equal to 0, so I'm going to put 0 in for y. I guess I didn't really need these brackets here. So 4x minus 3 times 0. I put 0 in for y. Negative 3 times 0 is 0, so that's just 4x minus 12 equals 0. Now I'm isolating x, so add 12 to both sides. And then finally divide by 4 to isolate x. I now know that my x-intercept is going to be 3. 
so I can put a dot at 3 on my x-axis and now that I've got the two points on my graph using my excellent ruler I can come up with the equation of the line. So with the general form when it's x and y and number equals 0 we can draw the graph of it relatively easy by first of all substituting 0 for x which will sol and solving for y which will give us our y-intercept then setting 0 for y and solving for x and this will get us our x-intercept and then with those two points on our x and our y-axis we can connect those two dots and determine what the graph of the line looks like. So just to summarize here the general form of a line is written as ax plus by plus c equals zero and the criteria is, is that it must be in this correct order. So we must first write x, then y, then the coefficient x, or sorry, then the constant x. Sorry, let's start that again. It must be in the correct order. We must start with the x term, followed by the y term, followed by the constant term, equals 0. And a, the coefficient of x, cannot be negative, And we, we cannot have any fractions. We want to have... Um, integers for, for b and c and no, no fractions in the expression. So if we have the equation of a line in general form this is how we would go about sketching the graph of it. And so if we want to graph a line with the general form equation we would first find the y-intercept of the line by setting x equal to 0 so let x equal 0 and then solve the equation for y. Then we want to find the x-intercept so we'll need to let y equals 0 and solve that for x. And now that we have the y-intercept and the x-intercept, we can plot those two intercepts on their axes. And then finally we can connect those two points in a straight line and we will have the graph of the line. So that's the general form of a line. ax plus by plus c equals 0.